Are your Pokestop nominations taking way too long to go through in Pokemon Go? Well, today I wanna to talk about reviewing in Pokemon Go, which is something that can get you these items called upgrades, which can speed up your nominations. Now it's important to know before we even talk about any of this, Niantic actually have recently implemented a machine learning AI, yes, chat GPT is taking over, that can go ahead and automatically accept nominations within 24 hours. Yes, a bot will take your nomination and decide whether it's a good one or a bad one and accept it. However, it's very uncertain on what nominations get pulled. Some way fairs are going to get all their nominations pulled into this bot and quickly accepted, but some people have none of them. So it's not a completely reliable thing to rely on. And sometimes your nomination will get end up thrown into the queue where there'll be a long list and you have to wait to decide its fate, but not with upgrades. Upgrades are items you can get to upgrade your nomination, get it put to the front of the queue and get it accepted really quick, even sometimes under 24 hours. How do we get upgrades? Well, to get an upgrade, you need a Wayfarer account. And in short, you need to get a hundred Wayfarer agreements to get one upgrade, which you can use on one of your waste stop nominations. That's the general gist of it. Let's get into it. Let me show you a little more. Now, most of you guys will probably have a Wayfair account if you ever nominated a Pokestop because you need one. It's very simple to get one. You're going to come to wayfair.nianticlabs.com. I'll link this below. You can continue to sign with Niantic. This is where you're going to sign in with your Pokemon Go account, whether you're Google, Facebook, or Apple that is linked with your Pokemon Go account. Now, once you've gone ahead and signed in, this is not what you're going to see for the first time. If you're just signing in, you'll see a bunch of prompts and things you have to go through. Before there was actually a test you had to get to um, get a account, but they've removed the test. So it's completely free. You don't need a test anymore. Once you get through it, make sure you refresh your Pokemon Go account, reopen the game, and then you'll see the nominations tab in there where you can go ahead and nominate stops. And of course, in here, you can actually come over to your contributions, which will show you all of your Pokestop nominations that you've gone ahead and sent through. You can see some of mine here, but we're not looking at nominations today. We're looking at reviewing and reviewing other people's nominations to get upgrades. Now, before we get into how it works, it's very important to understand the criteria of what makes a good nomination. Now, obviously you're probably gonna understand a little bit of this if you've already nominated Pokestops in Pokemon Go, since that's probably why you're here. By the way, if you wanna learn how to nominate Pokestops, I'll link below my guide up here. It fully breaks down the process and what is good. But you can come over here to the criteria section, which will show you the eligibility criteria, which will show you the different options of different good nominations, things like parks and plazas, gardens, forest, hiking trails, biking trails. I definitely recommend reviewing all of this. It'll even show you acceptance criteria, different things that is very important for a nomination to get accepted. It needs to be a great place for expiration, a great place for exercise, or a great place to be social with others. It's gotta be a permanent, tangible, and identifiable place or object. It can't be temporary. It must be publicly accessible by pedestrians. You don't need to, you know, crazy cross the street to get there. And it obviously must have an accurate title description and photo. There's also some rejection criteria in here, which you can definitely go ahead and review, showing you what doesn't make a good nomination, which was very important information for when we're reviewing. Obviously, if it's an illegible location, you know, for example, location is unsafe, no pedestrian access, it's pretty much the opposite of what makes it good is bad. Location is a private residential property. For example, farmlands, K-12s, and us uh, under schools like primary schools, preschools, all that stuff. Things like universities, colleges are fine. Adult oriented locations, different stuff like that. If it has a bad text or description, if the photo is bad, I've actually made a full video breaking down what makes a good nomination and what doesn't. If you need a little more information on that, check it out up here. I also am gonna link below here on the Niantic Help Shift, which has some great examples of different good nominations. So if you're looking for some interesting um, different options of things you can nominate or things that, you know, you can just get your head around that if you see these, these are good options. For example, you know, um, footpath marker signs are always great nominations. So if you see those, you know that you saw it on the Niantic page, it means it's pretty good nomination. So definitely re go through this. It has amazing, great examples in here. I recommend reading this up if you wanna get acquainted because that's gonna be the most important thing. However, before we get into it, a couple more things I wanna mention. Number one, remember you're gonna suck at the start. As a reviewer reviewing different people's nominations, I know I just dropped you guys like, this is good, this is bad, all that stuff. It's a lot of information to take in. So just accept that you're gonna suck. You might not make the best decision calls at the start, but that is completely fine. Over time, you will get better and you will understand. And the more nominating you do, the better you'll get at reviewing as well because you'll understand what is a good nomination when you nominate stuff and you'll also understand what's a good nomination when other people nominate stuff and you're on the reviewing side of things. Also do note that your rating at the start, your Wayfair rating, if you don't on the Wayfair, if you come over to your profile, it'll give you a rating of your poor, fair, good, or great with your nominations that you've reviewed. Don't worry, this is gonna suck at the start and mainly because your acceptances that you need to get these upgrades here can take, you know, weeks, months, sometimes years to get fully processed and only then will it reflect on your rating. So don't worry at the start, it's gonna take a little bit of time to get a better rating. Okay, let's talk about how it works. Once you're in your Wayfair page here, you can come over here to the review tab. And this is where you're gonna go ahead and review nominations. So as you can see here, I'm on the review tab. This is showing me a nomination someone's made and a bunch of options for stuff. First thing, I have the report button. This is the first one we're gonna go through. If you think it's abusive report, if it's a fake nomination, just like, you know, what is it? Obviously fake nomination due to the combination of abusive behaviors. This is doctored photos, copied photos, screenshot photos, etc. You can flag it there. You can also add influencing reviewers nomination with content that tries to sway or influence votes, such as dropping codenames or code words in the title, for example, like if you're 
calling out reviewers' names in your nomination, which is a wild thing to do, you can get flagged here. Explicit content and offensive content. So things like signing your nomination with your own Pokemon Go name or, you know, calling out reviewers' names would make this offensive. Here's the button you gotta press if you see that. All this stuff, you see abuse, make sure you tag it because we do not wanna have abusers in the community, in the Wayfair community. You can also skip a nomination. If I'm like, hey, what is this? Mine's so big sign. I'm like, nah, I'm actually good. Skip, I'm gonna go on to the next one. So you don't have to review every single one that gets put onto your page. Okay, nonetheless, let's start into this. First of all, nomination info. At the top here, it's gonna give you title and description. The title's gonna be in big, the title of the nomination or the suggested title from the Wayfair. Michael's Power Garden Escape. That's gonna give you a description. Area commonly used by residents of Michael Powers condos. Area to enjoy the garden and sit on the bench with others while enjoying the weather and the sounds of the residents and dogs passing by. Well, actually a pretty nice, pretty nice little description there. <laughs> nonetheless, it's also gonna show you the um, location of the way stops. So for example, it's gonna show you here and it's gonna show you the different way stops around as well. Now I say way stops because you have to remember that Niantic uses the same points, the same way stops in all their games and Ingress, Pure Dot, whatever it's called um, in the Monster Hunter one. <laughs> so just because this is a way stop doesn't mean it's gonna be in Pokemon Go because there's different rules for when Pokestops appear. But here it's gonna show you all the different way stops. Now, the first thing you wanna do is definitely go ahead and check for duplicates. It's gonna show you all the other, you know, way stops, Pokestops, whatever you wanna call them nearby. Um, and you wanna make sure none of them are the same. So none of these are the uh, Michael Power Garden Escape. You know, this is a Michael Powers Arch. So similar, but not the same thing. Um, this is a, a, a play slide. So just make sure it's not, there's no duplicates because you don't wanna be having two of the exact same Pokestops. You also have the option down here to suggest a new location. If you don't think this location is accurate, by the way, you can switch to satellite view if you'd like to get a better view. If you don't think it's a very accurate location, for example, this is kind of like on the building itself. Versus as you can see where this photo is taken, if I click big on it, you see that's like the walking place, there's buildings around. It's kind of like right in the middle of the path. So I could go ahead and suggest a new location and move this bad boy right to, I think it'd probably be like right here would be the photo if I'm, if my calculations are correct. So suggesting the location can be great if you do not think the location is accurate based on the map. Okay, now we get into the things. Now before there used to be a five, one out of five star ratings. Now they made it very straightforward with a thumbs up or thumbs down and questions to answer or an even I don't know question. First of all, the first thing, I don't know. If you actually don't know, don't be afraid to put I don't know. It's not gonna change anything. It's not gonna mess up your criteria. If you don't know, put I don't know. <laughs> Nonetheless, appropriate. Is location appropriate to be visited by pedestrians? It's very simple questions they're gonna ask you. Yes, this is literally a pedestrian crossway. I'm gonna hit it with a plus. Safe. Is location safe and publicly, oh my God, I can't speak. Publicly accessible by pedestrians. Yes, you know, there's sidewalks here. You can get to it. It is very safe. It's actually even protected by buildings. Uh, you'll probably survive a storm at this location. Accuracy is the submitted photo, title, and location description. If exists accurate and informative. Yes, pretty accurate. Um, it is literally what it says here. It's a nice little area, the garden escape, all that stuff. The location wasn't perfect, but I did suggest a new location. Permanent and distinct. Is the location a permanent, physical, tangible, and identifiable place or object that place marks an area? It's, yeah, it's a pavilion. It's not, it's not moving. <laughs> socialize. Is this a good place for people to meet and socialize? Yes, it's literally a pavilion. Can you even tell you, oh, this is optional. How many people will gather comfortably? Probably five to 10, I'd say. Yeah, any more than five to 10 would be a bit insane. Exercise. Is it a place for light physical activity? I'm gonna say no, it's probably not. Explore. Do you think this place is significant in the local community? I would say yes. This is probably a great place for the local people in these buildings. Go ahead and meet up. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear the yes. Finally, there's gonna give you these categories that I think are auto-selected here. Um, and you can go ahead and uh, select if they're accurate or not. Garden. Yes, this is a garden. Don't really see a plaque, no sculpture, and no, it's not a private home. You can even add your own categories here if I want to say like pavil. Is this really a pavilion? I'm not even sure if it counts as a pavilion. No, I, I'm just going to leave it as it's kind of just like a garden-ish hangout area. Then once you've done that, you can go ahead and simply click the submit button. Very simple. Bang, you've officially reviewed your first nomination. Now, I really want to point this out here. As you can see, by every single one of these little questions, they actually have little icons that can give you even more info. So if you're ever even more curious about, you know, what does socialize mean, for example, here it says, is this a gathering place for friends or strangers alike where you can share a drink or meal, be entertained, or watch public life happen? Or something that draws us together to share an experience in a locally culturally relevant way. It'll even give you examples, you know, pavilions, post offices, gaming, comic stores, libraries, including free little libraries on public spaces, parks and plazas, etc. So there's there's a lot of resources in the reviewing options that can help you out. So don't be scared to click in on these if you're not 100% sure. I highly recommend reading the one on appropriate because that does get confused a lot with what actually counts as publicly accessible. So I recommend reading that one. Now let's talk specifically about these questions. First of all, the first four questions here, if you give it a thumbs down, it will instantly end the review. As you can see here, let me let me hit a thumbs down on appropriate. It's going to tell me why you select no. You can go ahead and hit it with it. And once you click submit, you're on to the next. So if you want to decline a nomination and you do not think it's a good nomination, hitting the down, answering it on any of these four questions is going to instantly end it because they don't want any places that are inappropriate. They don't want any places that are unsafe, inaccurate, or not permanent or distinct. So the second you see something that's bad, if you, you know, if you don't want to accept it, hit the thumbs down. Now the bottom,
bottom questions, the bottom three are ones that you can go up or down on. It's not really gonna affect the review too much. This is just gonna affect based on how other people respond to the review, how well your rating is. Because again, at the end of the day, how you get the upgrades is that when you review, you're reviewing similar answers to the general community. If you review similar to the general community, you're gonna get an agreement, which of course will go one agreement towards your 100 you need for each upgrade. But yeah, if you're looking to decline a nomination, again, thumbs down on any of the top four, will instantly decline it. If you're looking to accept it, you obviously need to hit the plus on all four of these. And then whether you hit the thumbs or down, it's still gonna go ahead and you're saying, yeah, this is a good nomination. Let's look at this one, Silvio's Grant Richard Bench. Now, after reviewing this, it was told to me that memorial benches are actually something that is often submitted that are generally not legible. The only way memorial benches do end up being legible is if the submitter explains why it's important to the community and how that person was significant to the community. Another reason is potentially if it has a unique design, you could go ahead and accept it for that way. But if someone just submits a memorial bench and there's really nothing special about it, probably reject it. In memory of the beloved craftsmen of Shawville, Quebec, Rip, you will live on in our hearts. Oh, very, very cute. Nonetheless, first thing I'm gonna do, check for duplicates. What is this one? Unfinished story. Oh, they have a lot of benches around here, huh? It's not the same bench though. That's a completely new bench. It is appropriate. It is pedestrian safe. It is accurate and it is permanent and distinct. Actually, let me double check the accuracy of it. It's gonna be kind of hard sometimes to fully know, but I'm gonna say this is generally, it's probably on one of these sides of the streets. Good place to socialize. I'd say not a lot of people, uh, probably not the best place to exercise. Um, and yeah, it is significant to the local community. And yes, it is a memorial bench. And yeah, simple as that, I go ahead and submit and there you go. So that's pretty much the process of reviewing. You go through this one at a time and you review all these. Over time, you're gonna get really quick and understand what makes a good nomination and what doesn't. And again, I will link below my video fully breaking down all that stuff. Now, a couple things to know before we end this video. First of all, a cool down timer. If you go too fast and you accept nominations too fast, if I go bang, 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 bang oh, I, I'm not even that fast. Like imagine this, but faster. And then I go ahead and click submit, all this stuff. There's a 20 second cooldown timer. So if you go too fast, you're gonna get timed out. So again, take your time, especially when you're new, take your time. It's better to be thorough than quick because over time, like anything in life, as you practice more, you're gonna get quicker. Also, once you've gone ahead and gotten an upgrade, you can actually come over to your contributions tab. And this is where you can go ahead and add your upgrades. Now I have no nominations that are going through. I don't even think I have upgrades. Do I have upgrades right now? Yeah, I have zero upgrades available. Nonetheless, you can go to your contributions tab and there'll be an option here to go ahead and use your upgrade. But one thing I recommend doing, come to your settings in the Wayfair account and turn off automatic automatically apply upgrades. This is a thing where it's gonna automatically apply your upgrade to your most recent nomination. It's much better to not do that, save your upgrades. And then when it comes time, once you've gone ahead and nominated a Pokestop and it's gone through the 24 hours that the machine learning could potentially pick it up and accept it or potentially reject it. If the machine learning doesn't pick it up and you have to wait in the queue, that's when I would apply the upgrade. So be strategic with your upgrades because they are hard to get it again. You need a hundred majority acceptances to get one. By the way, I'm at 79% out of a hundred. It's a hundred agreements to get a nomination, but it's displayed in a percentage. So right now, for example, I have 79 out of 100 to get one more upgrade. I don't know why they did that, but it is what it is. Final thing I'm gonna say here, have faith in submissions. As a reviewer, it's always good to have faith that the person is trying to do the best and they're working on the best. So always, you know, obviously answer to the best of your ability, but don't go in with the idea that people are trying to cheat and get nominations and get Pokestops on their house and stuff like that. Have faith in them that they are trying to create good nominations, create good way stops and help out the community. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and link below all the resources I mentioned in this video. I do also do want to mention, join the Wayfair Discord. The Wayfair Discord is a great place where if you ever have questions about whether this is a good nomination, whether that is a good nomination, or you need any help, that's the place where all the people in there can help you. This video actually wouldn't be possible without them, which I'm going to go ahead and flash all of their names on screen. Shout out to all these people for helping make this video possible because I'm not a Wayfair master. I'm, I'm average at it, but these are the people who are really, really good at it and are able to help me put these types of videos together. Also, the Wayfair Forms is another great place. If you don't like this, Discord, you can join the Wayfair Forums, which is another good place where if you ever need support or help with a certain nomination and you're unsure whether you should be accepting this thing or not, that's a great place where you can go ahead and reach out. I'll link that below. As always, if you have questions, drop them in the comment section below and let me know how your Wayfair journey is going. Are you nominating Pokestops or is this something completely new to you and you're excited to get into it because we always love to see new people joining up the Wayfair community. Unless we'll see y'all next one. Follow up tips, everybody. Peace.